the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Whenever a crime is committed, the police attempt to deduce what happened on the basis of clues found at the scene. Logic and probability are employed to create the most accurate hypothesis possible. And from this, it is hoped the crime may be solved and the criminals apprehended. But logic operates on appearances. And as we all know, things are often not as they seem. Fact number one. The murdered man was an infamous drunkard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fact number two. He was also a philanderer and a gambler. Any number of people might have had cause to do away with him. Well, we cannot arrest the entire village. No, but this brings us to fact number three. If we can find out who in the village has recently purchased a box of safety matches, sir, we will have our murderer. <laughs> mystery drama, The Safety Match, is based on a short story by Anton Chekhov. It was adapted especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Robert Dryden and Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Anton Chekhov, the greatest of all Russian playwrights, was also a master of the short story. A doctor by profession, he came into contact with people from all walks of life. And perhaps his most profound realization was that high-born or low, all of us have our foibles and our pretenses. Even our very dreams and ambitions sometimes make us figures for comedy and can lead us into the unexpected. Our story tonight takes place in a provincial Russian village a hundred years ago. We're in the office of the examining magistrate, Trubikov, and his secretary, Dukovsky. Hmm. See here, Your Honor, the Serbians are at war again. No, put down that newspaper, and surely you must have some letters to write. <laughs> the world doesn't end at the edge of our district, Your Honor. Now, don't bore me with politics. Here it is. Excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, what do you want? Is this the office of the examining magistrate, Leonard Chupakov? It is. Are you the magistrate? Uh, no, that's uh, Mr. Chubikov there. I'm Dukovsky, the magistrate secretary. Hey, come in. What can I do for you? Your worship, uh, for, forgive me for intruding like this, but I'm afraid I've come with news of the worst sort. Yes? Well? My name is Andre. I'm the steward at the estate of Klausov. Major Klausov. Uh, we are talking about the retired officer of the horse guard? Yes, the, the, the very one. Well, it is to my great sorrow that I must report Major Klausov has been, or to put it boldly, he has been murdered. What? Murdered, you say? Yes, Your Worship. But is this possible? It, it's quite true. And not only that, his body is missing. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Only last Friday I saw him at the fair. I had a drink of vodka with him. Hey, Dugowski, come. We must go at once. We have none of us seen the master for three days. Three days. Make another of that, Dugowski. Uh, yes, Your Honor. He was in his room the entire time? Well, so we assumed, but this morning when the gardener remarked on it, somehow I felt something was amiss. Mm, there's something in the gardener's tone of voice, no doubt. Oh, no. Oh, the gardener is an old man who wouldn't hurt a fly. But I took the liberty of looking in through the window. And, well, gentlemen, you, you see for yourselves. Here's the door to the master's bedroom. 
You see, it's locked. Mm. Locked from the inside. The window that looks out into the garden was open. And that's obviously how the murderers gained entrance. Well, it's locked, all right. There's no doubt about that. Well, what are you standing around for, Stuart? Get an axe and a chisel and have some of the peasants break it down. Oh, yes, yes, you, Your Worship. Uh, you there, and, and you, what do you think they get? Help the magistrate conduct his examination. Hmm. Word of this deed has already spread. That's not good. What do you suppose we'll find in there? Uh, who can say? I am prepared for anything ever since the Major refused to live with his wife. She was a good woman. And long suffering. Mm, if you ask me, her tongue was rather too sharp. The Major was not an easy man to live with, God rest his soul. And a uh, man sends his wife away. Well, anything. Uh, gentlemen, the door is successfully breached. Good. Let us proceed. Saints uh, have mercy. The place is a shambles. Here, Dukowski, you see a noble by birth, a rich man. And what did he come to? He drank and dissipated, gambled, and now this murdered, banished under the most sordid of circumstances. Mm. And who could have done such a thing? Many people might have had cause, it's true. Those he owed money to, those he insulted while drunk. It's no use speculating. Be good enough to examine the floor for clues. Now, let's see what's here by the bed. Ah, uh, silver watch, 20 copec piece, sulfur matches. Uh, what do you find under the bed? Well, at least uh, two dozen empty vodka bottles, an old straw hat. Uh, oh. One top boot. One? Only one? Uh, yes. The scoundrels. The bladders murdered him and dragged the corpse out through the window. And ah, there, you see? The window is open. And look there, in the dirt below. Footprints. Your Honor, look what I found on the floor. A struck safety match. So, it's the window we must examine. But all the major's matches are the old-fashioned sulfur kind. Perhaps we have here an important clue. Oh, do shut up. Instead of chasing matches, why don't you examine the bed? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, the window shows no signs of having been forced. Hmm. This is most interesting. Oh, what's that? There's no blood, but there are teeth marks here on the pillow. And then... There's that one top boot with no sign of the other, eh? Huh? Well, whatever. Well, it proves that they strangled him while he was taking his boots off. You see, he hadn't had time to take the second one off. Oh, well, there you go again with your deductions. How do you know they strangled him? Well, because of the teeth marks on the pillow. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, come into the garden. You'd be better employed there than digging around in here. I can do that without you. Grass under the window has been crushed and trampled. And this bush here, also trampled. Mm, but look on these twigs. Mm, what, what? Some strands of dark blue wool. Uh, Andre? Yes, yes sir. Uh, what was the color of the Major's last suit? It was yellow. Excellent. Then the murderers wore blue. I, uh, I mean, well, take these twigs for evidence. Your Honor, uh, look here in the grass. What? What is it? Uh, there's a long, dark streak, you see? Yes. Yeah. If you look closer, you'll notice it's made up of little spots. Could it be... Oh, no, yes, yes, yes. I've seen that before, all right. It's blood. There's no possible doubt about that. Mm, it leads toward those lilac bushes on the far side of the garden. Uh, uh, Andre, is there anything there? Yes, Your Worship. The missing boat. Ah! It shows he wasn't strangled, doesn't it, if there is blood? No, 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 not at all. They, they strangled him in the bedroom, but once they were outside with him, fearing he might come around again, they struck him a blow with some sharp object. I see. Mm. 
What about some boots? Well, it confirms completely my idea that they murdered him while he was taking his boots off before going to bed. He'd already taken one off, and the other, uh, uh, this one here, he had only time to take half off. Now, the half-off boot came the rest of the way off while the body was being dragged. When will you learn to stop these speculations? It would be much better if you took some of the blood-stained graphs for analysis. And I... Yes, sure, sure. I will sit through this matter in the parlor. Bring us some tea. I say the murder was committed by an educated man. What evidence do you have of that? Well, the safety match proves it. The peasants here about are not yet acquainted with safety matches. Only a few landowners use them. And furthermore, it's evident that there was not one murderer, but three. Three? Mm-hmm. At least. Two held him down, while a third killed him. The, the major was a strong man, and the murderers must have known it. Drink it, tea. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Andre, with some cake. Thank you. Mm-hmm. In my humble opinion, Your Worship, I believe I may know the man you're looking for. Yeah, what well, you, you do? It was Nicholas, the master's valet. He's a rascal of a drunkard, the like of which heaven should not permit. Uh, what makes you suspect this is Nicholas? Because it was he who always took the master his vodka and put him to bed. He would have been the last person to see the master alive. Did he have any motive? I once heard him boast in the public house that he could kill the major. No. It happened on account of a woman by the name of Sonia. Nicholas was making up to her, but she caught the major's eye, and he made friends with her himself. Nicholas naturally was furious. Well, where is Nicholas now? Uh, well, that's just it. He, he's rolling about in the kitchen, drunk, and telling lies. Saying he's sorry for the master. Mm, bring him before me at once. Yes, at, it, at once, Your Worship. Come, 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 come. Your name? Uh, it is Nicholas? It is, Your Honor. Where is your master? Uh, murdered, Your Worship. Did we know he was murdered? The body, where is the body? Well, I don't know. How should I know a thing like that? Where were you three nights ago? Um, three nights. On uh, Saturday. Well, I, I don't know. I was drunk. I don't remember. Did you know the woman, Sonia? Uh, yes, I, I knew her. And is it true that the master cut you out with her? Well, uh, no, no, Your Worship. It wasn't that way at all. How? This man here cut me out. Andre Psycho, the master steward, the master cut him out. Hey, Nicholas, that is all for now. You may go. I'll say thank you, your worship. Andre, step forward. Your worship, your honor, look. His trousers. One, one is dark blue, the same color as the strands of thread we found. Excuse me, but... That must have happened when I looked in through the master's window. Now, permit me to put a question to you, and I... Of course, you were here last Saturday evening? Yes. Where? As a matter of fact, I had supper with the major about ten o'clock. Ah. And afterwards? I, 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 I don't remember. I, I had a good deal to drink with the meal, you see. I don't remember where... Oh, when I went to sleep. Why, oh, why are you looking at me like that? Where were you when you woke up? In the servant's kitchen. I was lying behind the stove. They, 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 they can confirm it. But how I got behind the stove, I don't know. Did you know the woman, Sonia? Well, there's nothing extraordinary about that. She first liked you, and then preferred the major? Yes. Would you like some more tea? No. No, I think we've had quite enough for now. And there, you may go. Thank you, Your Worship. There are a thousand thanks. Why did you let him off the hook? You had the man cold. Why didn't you ask him to produce the body? One must proceed with care. Trust 
me, Dukovsky. I know what I'm doing. Our next step is to speak with Maria Ivanovna, the Major's old maid sister. Yes? Oh, Your Worship. Madame Klausoff, I apologize for disturbing your prayers. Oh, what do you want? I'm sure you have heard already that there is a, a suspicion that your dear brother has in some way or other been murdered. I... I know. You know? It is divine retribution. The Lord justice for the dissolute life he led. Yeah, well, could you help us perhaps with some clue, some possible explanation? No. No, don't ask me. I, I can tell you nothing. There is nothing that can stop the will of God. What has happened is too horrible, too, too terrible to bear talking about. We all carry with us a splinter from the cross. There is guilt in each of us. No man is free from his thoughts. And the thought is sometimes father to the deed. On most police blotters, there is a surfeit of crime and a dearth of culprits. It seems here we may have the opposite case. I shall return shortly with Act Two. What man's conscience is so clear he can pass an officer of the law without a slight fluttering in his heart? And how we flinch should the roving official eye light on us with its scrutinous talons. Why do we feel so self-conscious before the man in uniform? Is it because somehow his uniform gives him the aura of omniscience? Or because we fear the possible error of his discretion? Confound that woman. The, the major sister. It's clear she knows something and is concealing it. The will of God. The Lord's justice. What do you suppose she meant by that? I'm quite sure she meant exactly what she said. It's equally certain that Nicholas, the valet, had something to do with the matter. You still think that, do you? Oh, you can see by his face what sort of a person he is. His alibi betrays him. Drunk and doesn't remember. I'm so certain he did not set the thing going. Why can you be so positive of that? He hasn't the brains for it. He was only a hired tool, you agree? Grind away, Axeman. There's a whole forest out there. Mm, the humble Andre was not without some slight share in the matter. His dark breeches, the same color as the thread found in the bush. His agitation, his lying behind the stove in a terror after the murder. And Sonia? So, according to you, whoever knew Sonia is the murderer. Hmm. Did he have... You were one of Sonia's admirers yourself. Does it follow that you were implicated, too? And she was a cook in your house for a month. I'm saying nothing about that. Uh, uh, uh yes. Well, uh, what of it? The point is, it's not the woman who matters, Your Honor. It's the mean, nasty, low spirit of jealousy that matters. They wanted revenge on the major. Humiliation and, and passion. That's quite enough motive for a murder. Oh, be still for a moment, will you? I'm trying to think. We have two of them. But who's the third? Nicholas and Andre held him, but who smothered him? Uh, Andre is shy, timid, seems an all-round coward. And Nicholas wouldn't know how to smother. He so he uses an axe or a club. Mm, some third person did the smothering. But who was it? Pour us some vodka, will you, while I gather my papers? At once, Your Honor. <sighs> Devil with all this, what has happened to the body? <gasps> Eureka! Huh? Eureka, Your Honor. I, I can't understand how it didn't occur to me sooner. That third person who acted in concert with those scoundrels Nicholas and Andre and, and did the actual smothering was a woman. What? A woman? Yes. And I mean none other than the murdered man's sister, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, excuse me. Are, are, you, are you drunk? 
You have a, a, a pain in your head? I am perfectly well. Now, how do you explain her confusion when we appeared, or her refusal to give us any information whatsoever? Yes, but I, all, all right, all right. Now, these are trifles, it's true, but consider this. She detested the Major. She never forgave him for living apart from his wife. Your Honor, she is a member of the old faith. And in her eyes, her brother was a godless profligate. That is where the germ of her hatred was hatched. She's a harmless old woman. But look at it from her point of view. They say her brother had succeeded in making her believe he was an angel of Satan. What else should a woman of her fanatical beliefs do? Kill her own brother? To rid the world of an antichrist? Of course. In her eyes, it was a religious achievement. It was she and nobody else. Even if you have cut me open. Well, uh, well, uh, never mind. I'll answer it myself. Yes? What can I do for you? Your worship, my name is Daniel. I'm a shepherd for Major Klausoff. Uh, the former Major Klausoff, that is. God bless you, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Well, look, we're quite busy now, really. Uh, what is it you want? It's not up to me to say how important it is, but there is something that... In my humble opinion, may be of use to you. I say. Well, come in, come in. Thank you. Uh, last Saturday night, the night they say the Major was murdered, I was a bit drunk, you see. And I was with friends until around midnight. On my way home, because I was drunk, I went into the river for a bath. I was floating about peacefully when I heard noises. I looked up and saw two men walking along the dam. They were carrying something bulky, and they didn't see me. But as they passed by, I plainly saw it was the master they were carrying away. Major Klausoff? Yes. And the two men, could you see their faces? No, no. Once I saw it was the master they were carrying, I was too frightened to look. Nevertheless... Just a minute, Dukovsky. Uh, you, you say you were drunk at the time? Yes, to my shame I was. But I'm quite sure it was the master. What was he wearing on his feet? The way... Nothing. Come to think of it, his feet were bare. Ah, it seems obvious to me. It is quite obvious, Dukovsky. I don't need you to tell me it is obvious. Hmm. Two men, did you say? Yes, Your Worship. They must have Nicholas and Andre arrested at once. Dukovsky. Oh, your Honor, at last you've arrived. I see you're in your customary agitated state. It's a little earlier than usual today. I just cannot comprehend it, sir. Here it is, now nearly a week since you've had the valet and the steward arrested. It's and... been four days. Well, what of it? You're convinced of their guilt. Why will you not believe in the guilt of the Major's sister as well? Are they not proofs enough for you? I don't say I'm not convinced. I just can't bring myself to believe it. All right. All right, I'll prove it to you. I have something substantial for you. What are you going on about? The safety match. The safety match? Mm -hmm. You'd forgotten about that, hadn't you? But I haven't. I am going to find out who struck it in the murdered man's room. It wasn't Nicholas. It wasn't Andre. Neither of them had any matches when they were examined. It was the third person, Maria. And I'll prove it to you. Just give me permission to go through the district to find out. That's enough, Dukovsky. Sit down. This investigation will be conducted on the basis of my experience and not your impulsiveness. This morning, we will begin our full examination. Philip, bring in Nicholas Stefikov. Well, Dukovsky... Be hesitating for, be seated, and take out quill and paper to write down this wretched fellow's confession. Yes, Your Honor. Ah, he is the scoundrel now. Nicholas? Oh, yes, Your Worship. 
1918 and 79, you were tried in the court of the First Division, convicted of theft and sentenced to imprisonment. Is that not so? Wait. Oh, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. In 1882, you were tried a second time for theft and were again imprisoned. True? Uh, Your your honor, I... True? Uh, Yes. It's no use trying to hide anything from us. We know all. I, I, I don't know what to say. It's true. I have crimes in my past. I can't deny it. I'm so shamed. Oh, 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 oh please, may, may I have permission to wash my face? Oh, of course. <laughs> Bailiff. Take the prisoner out and bring in Andrei Saikov. Oh, uh, thank you, Your Honor. There, you see? The valet is at the breaking point. You should not have let him go. He will collect himself. No, he's a wounded bull. All that remains is the kill. Now, with the educated sort like this fellow Andre, bullying would do no good at all. One must play upon the mind. Ah, Andre. Uh, please, have a seat. Thank you, Your Honor. I hope this morning you are going to be reasonable. Confession will lighten your guilt, your soul, and possibly your sentence. This is the last time I'm going to talk to you, Andre. If you do not confess today, tomorrow it will be too late. Oh. Now come, tell us all. I don't know anything about the murder. But... I don't know anything. Ah. Very well. I shall relate to you exactly what happened. On Saturday night, you were sitting with the Major drinking vodka. Nicholas, of course, was waiting on you. This much is true. At one o'clock, the Major announced his intention of going to bed. This was the Major's habit to retire just at one. Very good. You see, we know all. So... When he was taking off his boots, you and Nicholas seized the drunken man and threw him onto the bed. Oh, no. This cannot be right. One of you sat on his legs, the other on his head. Then a third person entered, a woman in a black dress, whom you knew well. No. She seized the pillow and began to smother him. While the struggle was going on, the candle went out. The woman took a box of safety matches from her pocket and relit the candle. Was that not so? <laughs> I can see by your face that I'm speaking the truth. No. I left the Major's. After the deed was done, you pulled him out through the window. Fearing he might come round again, you struck him with something sharp to fence the foul deed. Then you carried him away, across the dam by the river. I believe. Well, 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 what's the matter with you? I'm, I'm suffocating. What? I can't breathe. Oh, very well. If it is your wish, let me out, please. <laughs> Bailey, leave this man away. Yeah, you see? At last he has confessed. He has betrayed himself. And didn't I get round him cleverly? Caught him napping. That, my dear Dukowski, is how one conducts a successful examination. And you'll notice he didn't deny the woman's part in it. Yes, yes, yes. In a black dress. Maria. <laughs> Good day's work, eh? Now it simply remains to find out what was done with the body. If, um, uh, if it's all the same to you, Your Honor, there's something that still torments me. What's that? The safety match. I still have yet to prove to your satisfaction the identity of the third party. Your Honor? What? Oh, oh, Dukowski. Oh, good. How did your investigation go? Oh, it's very sad, Your Honor. Wasted day, huh? Eh? No, I don't feel too badly. You don't understand. My investigation has been a success. It has? I have found the third person, the guilty party. The Major's sister? No. 
No, it isn't her at all. And you'll never believe me when I tell you what I have found out. The rash charge in where wise men think it a waste of time to tread, to modify the old saying. And sometimes they return with more than their sage elders expected. We might have begun to suspect that the examining magistrate and his secretary were overzealous in their pursuit of a solution to Klausov's murder. But now it seems that Dukovsky, much to his superior's chagrin, has found at last some evidence worthy of the name. I shall return shortly with our final act. The experience of age versus the impulsiveness of youth. It's an eternal conflict. And when one throws into the bargain the pomposity of the old and the arrogance of the young, it can sometimes seem a wonder that anything is ever accomplished. A miracle that the truth is ever discovered at all. You have discovered the identity of the third party? I went to the Major's village. Very methodically, I visited all the little shops, public houses, and dram shops on the road, everywhere. I asked for safety matches, and everywhere they said they hadn't any. Well, I kept this up the whole day, and it was only an hour ago that I got on the track at all. Three miles from here, only three miles. I, I walked into a shop, and asked for the matches, and they gave me a pack of ten boxes. And uh, how did this put you on the track? Ah, the packet was supposed to contain ten boxes, but in fact, there were only nine. Oh, one was missing. Yes, and I asked the shopkeeper who bought the other box. Such and such a one, she replied. She was pleased with them. Then it is a woman after all. Indeed. But not the major sister, not Maria. No, no, no. You know who she is? You'll never guess. Olga Petrovna, the major's wife. What? His own wife. It was she who killed him. Well, you, you're out of your mind. I tell you, there could be no mistake. It was she who bought the matchbox. The shopkeeper knew her well. Olga Petrovna? It's quite simple. Now, look, to begin with, she smokes. Secondly, she was head over heels in love with the major even after he refused to live with her. True, they say she used to beat him because she loved him so much. That's it. Uh, nevertheless... This is just not possible. Think of the humiliation she suffered at her late husband's hands when he sent her off to live at her brother's. Now, what would such a woman do? Huh, come along quickly, or it'll be dark. Yes, you're reasoning in circles. I have the proof that you demanded of me. I have spent an entire day getting it. The only box of safety matches purchased in the district was by the murdered man's estranged wife. It, it makes such sense, I... I kick myself for not having thought of it before. What pigs we are to disturb a poor lady like this. Patience, Your Honor. In a few moments, we shall have the body and the murderers in hand. Uh, really, I'm having very strong misgivings. It's all right. Don't be frightened. We, we can say that we've broken a spring or... Oh, better yet, that our horses split his food. She won't suspect the thing. Oh, you've become quite the young inspector, haven't you? I suppose you'll talk of nothing else but a promotion after this. Mm, that we can discuss when I brought this case to its successful conclusion. Uh, the weather must be turning colder. My whole insides are shivering. I can't remember. Take her unaware. Yes. Yes? Madame Klausov? It is I, Leonard Tudikoff, the examining magistrate. Oh, Your Honor, oh, what a pleasant surprise. Oh, do, do come in. She seems precious little upset by recent events. Pardon? Uh, uh, this is uh, my secretary, Emil Dukovsky. Uh, madam? Oh, well, come into the parlor and... You're just in time for supper. You see, our horse has... Uh, may I take your coat? What? Uh, 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 take her unawares. Unawares, I tell you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, our horse, he has split his hoof. Oh. 
Yes. Uh, which is why we, uh, we, we you understand. Oh, excuse uh, me, then. While I tell them to set two more places at the table, and uh, make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen, I shall be a moment. Abruptness is of the essence. Now, she's gone off to compose herself. If you ease into your accusation, she'll meet you turn for turn and brazen her way out altogether. Well, do it yourself, then. Uh, what? Get me out of it. I've no stomach for it. But, but... Well, uh, there we are. All taken care of. And the sun of all will be out in a moment. Uh, 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 madam, uh, we did not drive over here to, uh, take supper with you, or, or to see your brother. Oh? Oh, I'm sorry, I assume you... see, we, uh, we came here to ask you, respected madam, where your husband is. My... My husband? Mm Mm-hmm. Whom you have murdered. What? My husband has been murdered? So, surely you do not pretend to not know of his death. Oh, but, but, but it's not possible. But it is more than possible, madam, since it was you who did it. I, I, I don't understand. I ask you, in the name of the law, where is the major? It's no use dissembling, madam. We know all. You do? But who told you? Be so good as to show us where he is. But how did you find out? Good, madam. Show us where you hid the body. Otherwise, we shall have no choice but to arrest you. Arrest? Did you say arrest me? Well, yes, that's the normal procedure. What do you want with my husband? Oh, madam, what is the use of these questions? We ask you to show us the body. Come. I will take you to him. Where are you taking us? Where is it you have hidden the body? In the bathhouse. No doubt, Your Honor. Not a shade of remorse. Hmm. Get your candle and matches ready, Dukowski. Yes, sir. Hmm. I see nobody in the dressing room here. He is beyond. In the bath itself. She has a fine sense of the bizarre, I must say. Like your English murderers. Hold up the candle. Hmm. A table, a dish with ham, plates, cutlery. Hmm. Has she been eating in here as well? Madam, forgive me, but where is the body of your late husband? Up there, on the top tier of the sweating frame. Ah. Oh. <gasps> I can see his form stretched out. Give me the candle. I'm going to make a positive identification. It is the Major, my husband. I can assure you of that, Your Worship. (laughs) What? (laughs) He moved. (laughs) Madam, you are making fun of us. This is not the murdered man. Some live fool is lying there. Here. (laughs) Whoever you are, the devil take you. (laughs) What? Who's that sleeping around in here? What do you want? Oh, it's the Major himself. Is this possible? Well, of course it's me. Well, who's that? Dukovsky. What the devil do you want here? I, I, I... And who's that other fat man down there? <laughs> Quick, God. The examining magistrate. <laughs> what on earth brings you here, my friend? How on earth did you find me here? Oh, Olga Petrovna. She's escaped. Oh, please, let her go. She'll be back soon enough. Uh, young Dukovsky, what are you looking at? Do you think I'm a ghost? Major, uh, you must tell us, uh, what are you doing here? Well, why shouldn't I be here as well as any other place if I'm all right? Here, come, have some of this ham. Uh, are you all right? Well, of course. I'm in captivity, as you can see, in solitary confinement, so to speak. And, uh, by the way, where am I? Is it possible you don't know? Well, I was unconscious when they carried me off. Carried you? Yes. Yes, kidnapped. Hmm. Uh, you're in your brother-in-law's bathhouse. Oh. Well, no matter. I'm fed. 
a shriek, perhaps, I try to escape. This is incomprehensible. <laughs> well, why, 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 what's so incomprehensible? Well, how did your boot get into the garden? What boot? Well, we found one boot in your bedroom and one in the garden. Uh, what do you want to know that for? It's not your business. Here, come on, have a drink. Well, this is an interesting tale to tell that boot. Our girl came to my window and insisted that I come with her. She refused to endure any longer the humiliation of living apart. But I refused. I don't like to be bossed. So she planted herself there under my window in the middle of the night, mind you. She began to abuse me like the shrew she is. You know, what women are like, all of them. Well, anyway... I, I was a bit drunk, so I, I, I took one of my boots. I heaved it out. The boot was in the garden because you threw it? At <laughs> yeah. I figured I would stop her scolding, but it didn't. She climbed right in through the window and beat me up. A little. And then she dragged me over here and locked me in. She feeds me now on love, vodka, and ham. It's not too bad. Hey, where, where are you going off to? Subikov, Dukovsky, where are you going? Go on. The two of them. Who fancy that? I went out of work. <laughs> the safety match. How could I know? Help what... yourself with your safety match. Don't make me mad or the devil only knows what I'll do with you. I never want to hear one of your theories again. Pride goeth before a fall. How many times we've heard that phrase and still it rings as true as ever. And yet, strictly speaking, our young secretary was not amiss in his application of the laws of deductive logic. He simply began with the wrong premise. How often we act on the basis of appearances, only to find out too late the truth lies in the opposite direction. I shall return shortly with a final word. Anton Chekhov died in 1904, his writing career cut short by tuberculosis. As a doctor, he had long since diagnosed his condition, and he knew he was dying, even as he created his most brilliant works, which adds a special poignancy to his gentle, dry observations about the human species. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Russell Horton, Court Benson, and Bryna Rayburn, the entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I have summoned you here to ask you a question, Comrade Nero. A, a question? Can you tell me why you should not be brought home, where you will either be shot or sent to one of the mines high up in the Arctic Circle? But... Why? You have failed in your mission. I, I wouldn't exactly say I have failed. You were assigned to subvert Senator Luther K. Huskis. Yes, I, I know that. To make the Senator decide that the states of California, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona are legally in the possession of the government of Mexico. I understand that, Comrade Snapper. To have Hutchins introduce a resolution on the floor of the Senate to have these territories restored to their legal and rightful owners. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our Mystery Theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.